morning, friends. Welcome back today to our study on the book of Haggai. I just want to read one verse today and talk about it for a moment and then see how that applies to what we saw yesterday. And then I want to see how that applies to our lives as believers today. In Haggai chapter 2 and verse 14, now keep in mind, he's already spent some time in uh, verses 10 through 13 asking them um, the simple truth. When something that is clean comes in contact with what is unclean, does it make the unclean clean? And the answer is no. It always defiles. Now he says in verse 14, Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me. Look at this. Saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. So in these verses that we've been looking at in, in uh, t- verses 10 through 13 where we saw that contact will bring contamination and when there's unholy things and holy things come in contact with it, that it will always contaminate that which is holy. Then it goes on to say that Haggai makes that application to the nation of Israel and he says, so is this people, so is the work of their hands. Haggai is making the application here to the nation of Israel. And what he's reminding us of is this simple truth. The, nation, the, the people of Israel had returned to the land. They had performed the ritual. They had rebuilt the temple, but their hearts were far from God. So here's where they were. They had returned to the land, but they had not returned to the Lord. Friends, it is possible for us to obey God out of a heart of duty, out of a heart of obligation, or out of a heart of fear, wondering what in the world will happen if I don't do what God wants me to do. And it's impossible it's possible to obey Him and still have a heart that's far from Him. It's possible to return to the land, but not to return to the Lord. And as a result of that, what Haggai is telling them is, that their disobedience in not returning to the Lord has rendered their worship unacceptable to God. And he tells them, listen, the reason why you have not been blessed, you wonder why you've not been blessed. You say, we're obeying. We're doing what God has called us to do. Why isn't he blessing us? And Haggai says, the reason why you have not been blessed is because you are coming to the Lord with unclean hands and unclean hearts. And he said, yes, you may be involved in obeying him, but but your hearts are unclean and your hands are unclean and as a result of that he cannot bless you notice he says here in this passage so it is with this people the application is twofold israel had been originally set apart for the Lord, and was therefore to be holy. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6 tells us that, that Israel was to be the example, first and foremost, of what one nation under God would look like in this world. And the Bible says that the nation had been defiled, and because of that, that everything it touched, including its offerings, including the work that they were doing for God, became unclean. With that in mind today, how does that apply to us? Friends, let me remind you today, holiness is not a popular word in the day that we live in, but let me remind you that holiness is very clearly communicated to us in the Word of God, and and the Word of God makes it very clear that we are to be holy. First of all, friends, holiness is not just for the preacher. It's not just for the evangelist. It's not just for the people that we come in contact with that are involved in what we would call full-time ministry. Holiness is for you as a child of God. If you're a child of God today, God has called you to be holy. Romans 6.14 says this, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So he reminds us here that as a child of God, sin is not to have the rule in our life. Sin is not to have the authority in our life. We are under a new master. We were a slave to sin before we were saved, but now we're under a new master in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And friends, we are commanded to be holy because of the command of God and also the character of God. Notice what it says in 1 Peter 1, verses 15 and 16. It says, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So we have the command of God there for you and I to be holy, set apart for God, set apart from sin. He says, As he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am 
holy. You see, friends, the truth of the matter is God is holy and God commands us as his people to be holy and holiness is not an option for the child of God. Notice what it says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, it says this, follow peace with all men. Oh, we could stop there for a few moments and look at that as well, couldn't we? Follow peace with all men. But that's not what we're looking at today, but I do encourage you to think about that. Follow peace with all men. And then it says this, end holiness. So Garland doesn't say follow peace, but it says follow holiness. You know, I've met some people today that are all for following peace at the expense of holiness. And this isn't what the Bible's saying. It says follow peace with all men and holiness. No, it says without which no man shall see the Lord. Friends, that sounds pretty clear to me. That's pretty uh, black and white there. It says without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And then it reminds us as children of God in Romans chapter 6. I encourage you to read Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8 in depth today. What powerful chapters when it comes to this matter of holiness and understanding our position as children of God. And in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, it reminds me now that as a child of God, that I am digged to seeing, that I am crucified with Christ. It says this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, from this point forward, ye we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. And then he reminds us of, of the danger of living, or, or, of rather of the importance of living holy in an unholy world in John 17 and verse 15. It says this, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. It's God's desire. Friends, it's God's will for the child of God to live holy in the midst of an unholy world. There's, a, there's an explanation of this principle in John 13, verses 1 through 11. There's two things in John 13, 1 through 11. There's, first of all, a lesson in humility when Jesus takes off his outer robe, his outer jacket, and he takes a towel and a basin and he washes the disciples' feet. There's a lesson there in humility. On the way to that supper, if you study in the other Gospels, Jesus' disciples have been arguing over who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And as they come into the, the house that day, as the custom was, usually the lowest servant would come and he would wash their feet because as they walked through that dusty road with their sandals on, their feet would get dirty. And it was a polite thing to do to call a servant and to wash the feet of your guests. That day, no servant came. Certainly no disciple was going to do it. They'd just been arguing over who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, not over who was going to be the ultimate servant. And Jesus gives them a lesson in humility by washing their feet. But there's also a lesson in holiness. You see, Jesus says to Peter, you've had your bath, but your feet are contaminated. In other words, when you get saved, you are cleansed from sin. But yet as we walk through this world, our feet get contaminated. We still sin. And he says, listen, you don't need to get saved again, but you do need to experience the cleansing of God in your life because contact with the world will bring contamination in the life of a child of God. Don't let that contamination build up. Deal with it. Correct it. Confess it. Keep clean, keep short accounts with God. J. Vernon McGee had this to say, he says, my friend, one of the ways that you can make your church a good church is to go there all prayed up and confessed up and repenting up and cleaned up. Then you won't block the blessing that might come to your church that day. He went on to say, remember that when the unclean touches the clean, what happens is that the clean becomes unclean. Your heart has to be right with God before there's blessing. This is a tremendous principle I know of nothing that is more practical. Friends, let me ask you today, is your heart right with God? First of all, are you saved? Has there come a time in your life that you've repented of your sin, that you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone to save you? But Christian, is your heart right with God? Are you at the place in your life that you are walking in sweet fellowship with God and that you are not allowing the contamination of the world to contaminate your life. But you understand that holiness is the life that the God calls a child of God to and that you are living a life that is honoring and pleasing 
in his sight. I trust that is the case today.